What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about some pretty significant buffs to Elro here, making him a pretty nasty character. A new store coming our way soon, though most of you probably will not be using it anytime soon. And also some bug fixes, some changes to the gold, the gold economy, probably not what you're hoping for, but we are seeing some changes to that. And hopefully we see some more changes to the gold economy. We're going to break that down. I'll talk about a couple of bug changes that were in this update. We'll talk about all that in today's video. Let's dive right into it. So it starts out with a Discord post from CG Hemophilus and... For the record, I did double check this. All of the updates like this will be posted on Discord. It's not going to be done on the website. So if you are looking to get an update on these, make sure you go ch uh, check out the Discord server for, Hemo for Heroes of Middle Earth. And then you'll see the game updates announcement channel. And that's where Hemophilus will post things like this. So let's start by talking about the new store. And if you've played... Galaxy of Heroes, you've played Marvel Strike Force, this is going to be a very similar store, the one you've seen before, it is basically shard supplies, in which it, once you get extra shards of a character, once you take them up to seven stars, those will convert to currency in this new store. Now, currently, this store is only going to have blue gear and material and ability materials, but do not be surprised to see someone become farmable inside of that store. Like, for instance, Galaxy of Heroes has General Grievous. You have Ultimus from the Ultra Store in Marvel Strike Force. So you're, you're going to see probably at some point some character becomes farmable in there. I have no idea who it's going to be. I don't really want to speculate on that at this point because there's a whole lot more stuff we got to talk, talk about in this. But they will note right here, one excess character shard converts to one shard coin. That's, uh, that's a pretty low conversion rate, especially when you compare other games that have done this. So it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. So hopefully that means the items in the store won't be that expensive. But uh, we'll, when the data gets pushed later, I'll be able to talk about what's in that store and if it's and my thoughts about it, if it's going to be worth it. Moving on from that, Eladin. We do finally have specifics on Eladin. June 15th at 8 a.m. Pacific time is when the event starts. It ends June 21st at 8 a.m. So you have six days to do this marquee event for Eladin. Same thing we had with Arwen's event. If you do up through the fourth tier, you will get a three-star unlock of Eladin. Beyond that, you can then gear up your Eladin, and you can take them up to five stars to do tier six, which will get you 500,000 gold, 250,000 character XP, and 10 of the green epic ability material bottles. Those are used for some of your higher-end ability upgrades. But if you do tier five with your three-star Eladin, if you gear them up a little bit, you'll get 10 luminous crystals, 50k gold, and 15k character XP. All right, yeah, so pretty much standard for what we've seen with Arwen. I would expect this to be the standard for marquee events going forward. Elrond's adventure begins shortly. We've already talked about that in another video. Starts Monday, June 26th. You'll be needing to use elves for this, where five or tier five will get you Elrond unlocked. That requires five elves at five stars. Ideally, the best team right now is probably going to be the four Rivendell elves plus Neramiri or Leliel. I think. I think Naramiri would probably be a little more useful because you get at least a heal out of her with that with that elf team. But we'll we'll do uh, we'll do some footage on that when we get to, when we get to the Elrond events. Moving on from that, gold economy changes, and this is something that I think is going to be a little contentious within the community. Uh, I like what they've done here, but I also need to see some uh, some adjustments for free to play sp soon, especially because. Uh, Free to play have not really had any increases in gold outside of the bonus chest, but you're not talking a huge increase in gold from that just yet. Going for gold, basically any of these previous offers that you bought, there was not a lot of gold in them. They are adjusting that up. Like for instance, the offer that's going to come with Elden is marquee event. If you buy that, it usually gives 15k gold. The one for Arwen did the same thing. So now if you buy it, it's going to give 100,000 gold up from 15,000. Huge increase in gold on that. These will be retroactively mailed to people who bought these offers. Now, I also did ask if this means that these offers will be recycled for people who did not buy them. And from what I was told, that is not going to happen. Not really something they can do or really have in the works right now. Hopefully we do get that at some point, especially now to know people are going to be getting bonus gold out of these. 
probably gonna be a little more tempting to buy these. Like this Hobbit Heroes Mega Bundle that was 20 bucks for 100 shards each of the Hobbits. I bought that because it just saves so much time on, uh, no, it was 200 shards of the Hobbits, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. 20 bucks for 200 shards of each of the Hobbits minus Sam, I think was what, was what that offer did. It was a really good value for that, especially since we're starting to kind of get into Hobbits now. Um, yeah, this is, uh, that was a really good bundle to buy, especially now looking back at it in hindsight. Treasure Hunter bundle, I can't, most of these I can't remember. Strider's Gear bundle, I think I may have bought that one. I can't remember, but I know I'm gonna get some gold out of this, but I can't remember what half of these bundles are. And I don't see anything here for Arwen, so I'm curious to know if they're gonna do a retroactive change on Arwen's offer, especially since they're doing the same thing for Elodin's offer where now they're increasing the gold. I wonder if they wonder if I can convince them to do that for Arwen's offer as well. I don't know. But um but yeah, so if you have bought those offers and you will be getting some kind of gold here in the next couple of days from those. Probably several hundred thousand if you bought all these. Probably half a million if you bought all these offers. Well, I don't want to speculate too much on that, but I would see a significant gold uh like a gold increase for those people who bought these offers. Hopefully we do get some free to play stuff. Um, I mean, man, I, yeah, free to play could definitely use some gold, especially since right now, I guess I, at this point you have to assume that the gold income is going to be coming with the raids and free to play has just got to hang on for however long that raid's going to be. Hopefully it's next month and free to play can start getting some gold in because man, you guys have got to be hold, hurting for gold at this point. I can't, I cannot imagine what it's like being free to play and just not be able to get gold right now. Like it, it's gotta be pretty bad. Uh, moving on from that, uh, the new campaign chapter, Guild Battles Chapter Five. This is gonna be good. If you are farming gold, Chapter Five is going to be probably the best place to farm your gold in terms of return on your energy spent per gold. Right now in Chapter Four, it's pretty comparable to Chapter Six in terms of campaign, but chapter five, as far as I can tell, is gonna really blow that out of the water. I believe it's 130 or 140 gold per campaign energy spent, which is gonna be a huge increase. Right now, chapter four is, I think like 110 or 100, yeah, not even 110, like 102 for a single, uh, for a single uh, per, uh, per gold spent, or per energy spent. Let me see here. Yeah, chapter four, yeah, so it comes out to about, a, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, so you're talking 112 gold, I believe that goes up to like 130, 140 in chapter 5 per energy spent, so you're gonna get a massive increase in gold per guild energy spent, chapter 5 is gonna be a significant deal, and I'm gonna be curious to see what the energy bottle, the ability material energy, or ability material income is gonna be like in chapter five. Hopefully they're not dropping yellows like blues and they, like they have with blues here, but I imagine it's gonna be a much better income of purple ability materials from that. Maybe even a very low chance of getting the green bottles, which is the epic ones. Well, we'll see. We'll see what they do with that. But yeah, chapter five coming and that should be out today, if not tomorrow. And We'll, uh, we'll dive through it. I, maybe we'll see some new characters in there as well. And we can do some uh, theory crafting with their kits like we had with Gollum and Gimli and Legolas' kits and the Guild Battles as well. We'll see how that all pans out. Moving on from that, the big thing here, buffs to Elro here. Elro here got some huge buffs. And, you know, we were worried with the with the nerfs to Elodin what was going on there. And it seems that... Uh, as Elodin falls a little bit in power, Elver here rises to to take up his spot. Elver here has already is already doing some solid damage, but these buffs are oof, ooh, especially if Elden's on the team, it's gonna be nuts. So let's start by talking about his second special, Elven Vengeance. Right now, it will deal damage and ignore a certain percentage of the target's armor, but if Elden is an ally. He now hits four times for a little bit less damage per hit, but still hitting a huge amount, and also ignoring 40% of the target's armor. That's a pretty, pretty big change. So for instance, I'm just gonna pull up my elbow here. As soon as I saw this drop, the news drop with the changes to elbow here, I quickly just went and took him up to the next gear tier. 
Where'd I put my Where'd I put my boy? Where is he? I probably unfavorited him. That was a mistake. Wait, why am I why am I doing this? Let's make this easy. Where's Elro here? There he is. Yeah, so right now, Elven Vengeance maxed out will ignore about 30% of the character's armor and will hit for a little bit less now per hit, but the fact that it's now ignoring more armor and it's also hitting more times, it's overall the damage has increased basically on this. So you're gonna you're gonna get significantly more damage with Elven Vengeance at max level with uh with Elden as your ally. That does require Elden to be an ally for this to happen. Now if Elden dies, I don't know if that's gonna if that's gonna trigger the extra hits and ignoring more damage. But uh, but I imagine it will it will still do a significant amount. But yeah, look at this. Elden is an ally, hits the enemy four times for 120% damage per hit, ignoring 50% of the character of the target's armor, going up from 30 to 50%. That's nuts. Nuts. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Uh, they changed it. Did they? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm misreading it. Yeah. But yeah, basically 480% damage, ignoring 40% of the target or 50% of the target's armor. And if he has a boon, he gains stealth. Now, his first special, which is going to apply Expose to the target, will also give him Might. So now, not only are you putting Expose on someone for likely two turns, which they may not cleanse, you're now going to give Might to Elro here. He's going to ignore half the target's armor, plus there's Expose there. I don't know if that's additive or multiplicative. Either way, it's still going to really hurt. Doing the math, someone was doing the math in my guild cluster today. We're looking at probably somewhere around 15k crits on or 15 15 k total hits, total damage done with Elven Vengeance at max level, fully upgraded seven star Elver here. This could very likely one shot some characters out there, depending on how things pan out. So do not be surprised to see Elver here turn to a bit of a monster now because of that buff. And not to mention, you also get bonus crit damage here with the retaliation, and that ties into more of his changes here, and that his passive. Now he gains 20% bonus crit damage, and then when an enemy attacks an ally with Provoker Taunt, he retaliates. But if that ally is Elodin, increases retaliation damage by 15%. That is new. That is not uh, that is not in his kit already. He is going to still get the 20% bonus crit damage, but now that bonus retaliation here now. And keep in mind, he's already getting bonus damage with his retaliation because he's using his basic, and every boon on him is going to stack up an additional 15% damage per boon on him. So at the very least, he's getting might here on Deadly Grace. So while he has that and he's retaliating and Elden's getting hit, but well now you're getting retaliations with this, and it's gonna be a lot of damage, and then you not you then you finished off with Elven Vengeance, and then he gets he gets stealth here. Which is another boon. So he's gonna keep boons on him. And that's not to mention what Rivendell's gonna do. If we get deadly on Elro here from Eladin's special, that's even worse because now you've got bonus crit chance to go with this bonus crit damage. You've got your generations, you've got defensives, you got you got boons coming from Arwen on the team as well. So both Lomian and Elro here are gonna do some nasty damage uh, on this team with uh with how these things are building up. Lomian's gonna kind of rely on those bonus uh, on those boons to really get that bonus crit chance in on a single target hit, and now you've got another nasty single target hit here. It would not surprise me if built correctly, and depending on who you're fighting, it would not surprise me to see both Lomian and Elro here just delete two enemies off the map right away. Like it's gonna be pretty crazy, and not to mention they both have. Pretty fast speeds. 175 speed on Elro here. Lomian, I believe, is also pretty quick. Uh, Elro here, I think, is number four in terms of speed. 174. Lomian is right behind Elro here. So two of your faster elves in the game have some of the most ridiculous single target damage now within the game. Lomian with his ultimate is going to destroy things. Same with Elro here. Both these characters, like, that's where your damage is going to come from with this team. Not a lot of AoE damage. Elron has some. But in terms of single target damage, it's going to be hard to find a team that will be able to outperform them in terms of single target damage. They are just going to be able to delete some members with this. So moving on from that, from that insanity that is Elro here's buffs, 
a whole bunch of bug fixes. There's an issue right now where you can try to sim more than five hard battles and the game just tells you it's an error. Just change the sim amount to five, that will be fixed. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of bugs here. I'm not gonna really go over most of them. One big one to note here, I'm not, or I, it's listed improvements and bug fixes, but this is a very nice one. Hard nodes now reset every night at the same time as your daily objectives. So when your daily objectives reset, that is when hard nodes now resets. Uh, let's see. Uh, soft lock that occur when somebody strive for the first time. Let's see. Where's um, fix an issue where guild officers? That was a big one. Guild officers are now able to finally like remove members or remove leaders who aren't active anymore. Uh, PVE characters leader ability now shows up properly in the setup screen, which is nice. Let's see, is there anything else here? Off the top of my mind, I don't think there's anything else that uh, I noted that was really, that really stood out to me. I think, I'm sure there's some in here that I'm not catching right now. It's also getting a little late at night. Uh, Elro here, Elo here. Why do I keep saying Elro here? Is it Elro here? Is it Elo here or Elro here? Have I been pronouncing it wrong this whole time? No, it is Elro here. Okay, so yeah, they, there's a typo in that. All right, uh, I'm not gonna get too pedantic about that, but jeez, man, it's yeah, it's almost 11 o'clock at night, and I'm like, man, there's no way I've been reading his name wrong this whole time. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Also, Elro here's Deadly Grace now has the proper ability descriptions in it, and then again, yeah, if you guys want to keep an eye on things, do check out the Trello link if you guys want to see what's going on. That is basically your update on bugs and where developers are with them. They usually will talk about like your most pressing ones will be like, devs are uh, aware of it, it's being investigated, update ready to push, or has been fixed, all stuff like that. Do recommend you guys go check out that Trello website. It's been very helpful for making sure the devs have been on track of bugs, if it's been something that I need to report or not. But, uh, but yeah, that's gonna kinda wrap it up here. What do you guys think about the changes to uh, Frodo and Aragorn no longer slide in combat? Well, that's funny because we have Strider and I, ah, whatever, man, I'm, I'm getting, okay, uh, anyways, um, let me know what you guys think, are you guys excited about these buffs to Elro here, what do you guys think about the changes to, to the, uh, to the, um, the changes to the, the gold offers, and what do you guys think about the new shard shop, let me know down below, as always, if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, share this video, subscribe to the channel, I will see you guys next time.